G'day. I spent most of the day, or good proportion of the day, making up this. What's that you ask? Well, this is the basis for a three ball handle. And uh, these things are found not so much on CNC machines, because they usually don't have cranks, but on, on lathes and on old mills, you may well find a three ball handle. Usually there's a, there's a stub on one or both of these ends, uh, and, a, and the shaft goes through the middle and there's a, possibly a keyway or, a, or an extension shaft or something or a nut, something like that. But that's how a lot of the old machines or older machines are set up. My lathe has got a couple. Um, usually ones like this where there's a bit of symmetry, they'll have two handles. And ones that are just got one handle on the end will have a larger ball on this end. And the reason for that, I think, is that you're trying to get it so the center of mass is in the middle there. So if you've got a handle sticking up here, you've got a little bit more mass, so you make that ball a little bit bigger, and that keeps the center of mass in the middle of the handle, and it makes it a lot easier to turn around. And I'm not going to make all of the handle today, but this is how I do the, the three ball. So if you're ever uh, wondering how that's done, uh, this, is, this is the way I do it. I'm starting off my ball handle by pre-shaping the, uh, the blank. So there's going to be a ball here, uh, another ball there and then another ball here where I'm holding it in the chuck. I would have liked to have a, a slightly longer bin material to make this out of, but you know, beggars can't be choosers and, and when that's finished it'll cut off around about there somewhere. So that's the diameter of my final, final ball on the end, that's the, the diameter of the middle ball and that'll be machined down to the same as this so I'll, I get the symmetry. The last thing I want to do here is put an angle on here. So that's half inch and I want to reduce that down to, uh, so that's 12.7, uh, reduce it down to uh, 5 sixteenths, so 7.94 I think it is. Um, and I've worked that out to be basically 7 degrees uh, and that's purely for convenience. I can tilt my headstock over 7 degrees far more easily than I can do 6.35 or something like that. Uh, I could set the taper turning device to do it, but uh, that's a, a lot of work for something which is, is purely cosmetic, so I'm not worrying about it. The other thing I've done is out of the same bit of bar I, I parted a, um, off a, a piece, uh, I've got a, a, a 7.94 hole through there, and then that's half inch. What I'm going to do, once I've got this set over to put my, my tapers on there, without touching the setup there, I'm then going to bore this so that I, I basically have a, a bush with a taper inside that will fit on here. And that's probably the, the, the biggest secret of making a three ball handle, is having somewhere to, to, to grab it. Because what I'm going to do is I'll put the ball on here, uh, then I'll put the ball on here, then have to grab that there so I can then put the ball on that one. There's the, the, the pre-shaping of the uh, handle, what do you call them, spindles, uh, for the balls to, to go onto. To get the final cut in there, I used what is normally referred to as a parting tool. This is actually a, 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 a Tagutech thing, and this is designed so that the blade actually sits on a V there, so it can cope with some side forces. Uh, this one, once again, Got from my friends at General Tools, no, uh, no sponsorship or anything like that. Um, but uh, what's that? TCB 263S, I think, something like that. Um, but quite a nice um, parting tool. The the blades are actually reversible, but I don't I don't use the the, the back of them there because you don't have the the clearance in there. But I guess if you were cutting um, you know brass or, or plastic or something that wasn't terribly uh, large in diameter, it might come in handy. But uh, yeah, handy handy tool. So I've done that. I'm now going to set up my my blank here. Put a small boring bar in and just uh, bore that out so it matches the the, the taper there. This is the boring tool I'm using to bore out my bush. Uh, I think it's a, I normally use it for internal threading. It looks like it's something like a, an Acme or something like that. Doesn't matter. 
the main criteria I have, have here is it needs to be small uh, because down that end it's, it's just under 8 millimeters in diameter. To work out what the, the size is, as well as leaving the, the, the compound at the same angle from that I used for doing the, the, the reliefs, um, I came up and I, I, I drilled through with the, um, the 5 16th drill, but then I came up with a half inch, and you might be able to just pick it, there's a slight witness line there, I just came in until the outer flutes just touched on the work, and that's going to get me the large diameter and so I'm going to work to that. This is slightly over length, it needs to be 21.1 I think and it's 22, 23, something like that. But what that means is I can then come along and measure the, the diameters and the smaller diameter is the easier one to measure and make sure it's about the right size and if it's not I can take a little bit off this end to make it bigger um, or I can take a little bit off this end to make things small as in the you know the the, the taper starts earlier uh, and so that way I've, I've got a bit of control as to exactly where it is it, it means this this uh, boring isn't quite so critical here's my split bush um, I split it with an angle grinder so that's why it's looking a little bit sort of hacked but uh, if I do that you can see how it all it all comes together that that sits on there like so I can clamp that in a in a three jaw chuck uh, just being mindful to you know two jaws there and one jaw there sort of thing uh, and that will hold that quite steady so what I can now do is I can come along and I can shape this this uh, ball and this ball uh, and then once I've done that I can turn this round part that off to the the appropriate lengths take that down in in size to um, five eighths as that one is and then uh, do the, the ball shaping on there. This thing here is my ball turning device. Uh, it's of what people refer to as an up and over style, so the, 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 the cutter goes like that. I made this uh, 10, 10, 15, 20 years back, I can't remember when, and it's another one of those bits of tooling which uh, it works, but I keep thinking there must be a better way of doing this. Um, one of the problems with it is that setting up to turn a, a spherical ball you basically have to have the axis here intersecting the axis of the lathe and so you have to adjust it this way. To set this up what I usually do is I, I come along uh, and I line this up so this is on the on the center line I can then crank this down and this is a left uh, this is a right hand thread and it probably needs to be left hand to make it just a little bit more intuitive but then um, but then what I do is I'll wind this out this way and put that down and then come in and touch okay and then lock my carriage so the cross side is locked the the, the traverse is locked all I'm going to be doing here is feeding with this with with the handle uh, and that's another thing that I sometimes think, you know, a worm drive on one of these would be nice. So, yeah, there's a, there's a few potential things to improve here. Uh, but that should then give me a, a, a spherical surface. That Basically, that's how it's done. Um, I need to come in with a file and get this corner. I just, I, I've discovered uh, some time back that trying to get a tool into that corner, it can be tricky. And so usually I, I leave it just a little bit of step and I'll come in with a file and just uh, blend that out. Then it just needs a bit of a, of a polish with some emery to get it up to a, uh, a shiny state uh, and then that's this end done. Uh, I'll then move on to the middle here and one of the reasons I'm using this chuck is that um, I get a little bit more room for as you saw when I was 
pushing that over. Uh, I need all the room I can get, so I'm going to get a bit more room there. There's the there's the end ball. Uh, to do one in the middle, I can't really indicate or, or you know touch on the end there. So what I'm what I've done is I've put a line in the middle here, and I've lined up my uh, the tip of my tool. Not quite perfect, and if I put it over there and then put it over here and, and turn it a little bit, I get a couple of witness marks. So I've, I've just sort of adjusted that until the witness marks are around about right. This should be a symmetrical uh, ball around the two uh, shafts there, so we'll just have to um, see how we go with that. I, th I think I should clear this, um, but we'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, if not, in with the file. As you saw, I had to switch to the file. Um, I was just starting to, to, to touch over here. So went to the file. It's given me a slightly rougher finish, but I'll, I'll just have to polish that out. The texture is to show me where the, the line is. And, and basically, uh, when I stopped with the ball turning device, I still had a bit of a flat there. And so what I wanted was something that would indicate as I, you know, rolled over the, the, the shape here with the file where the the, the center line was and so I've, I'm now down to a point where I've just got the, the the color showing and so that's you know as close to spherical as I think I'm going to get with that I might go to a finer file and just do a little bit of touching up but then it's it's with the emery to to polish it up I'm just getting ready to do the last ball here so I've got the I've, I've done my polishing here uh, right down to about there actually and I've now got that clamped in that uh, little um, block I made up with the tape at holding it, so that's that's solid. I've uh, once again I've dialed in on a, on a part here. It's still got a little bit of wobble, but it'll be close enough because uh, at the end of the day, this is a this is sort of a cosmetic um, ball. It doesn't have to have have great accuracy uh, to exactly where it is. The, the axes of the balls don't have to be coincident. Uh, it's nice if they are, but you know. A, 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 0.1, 0.2 of a millimetre here or there will, will, will not be noticed. So similar to as I was doing this one, uh, I'll set up my uh, ball turner and um, put, a, put a sphere on there. And there you have it, a, a, a three ball, or the basis of a three ball handle. I've got a little bit of scuffing there from the um, clamping of the, of the bush, split bush that I had on there. So I have to do a little bit of polishing there. Uh, from here on, it's, it's relatively easy. I'll support that in a couple of V blocks and then I'll just come across the top and do a bit of a skim. Bore a hole through there for the, uh, the spindle. Um, there's a couple of little things, there's an extension tube that goes on there. There's a handle that goes in the end there. Um, you can actually buy these and this is this is where this one came from. I've had this sitting around in my uh, useful bits box for quite some time. Uh, but that'll just take a, a quarter inch hole and that'll, that'll sit in there. Uh, and it looks roughly about the right proportion, so that's all good. But uh, that's, that's the basics of, of how you make up a, a three ball handle or how I make up a three ball handle. So thanks for watching. See you for the next one.